The following content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. It does not constitute means for diagnosis, healthcare advice, nor treatment. Make use of a qualified healthcare professional for such purposes. The information contained in this video represents the views and opinions of the persons expressing them and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of a PhD teaches you, the channel's creator, its subscribers, or sponsors. The opinions do not constitute an endorsement nor the views noted by any government or private agency. It's a neurobiological disorder. There's no known cause. I went to several autism conferences down in Tuscaloosa. They do a lot of research down there and they're looking at genetics and they're looking at physical health of the mother. They're looking at a hundred different possible causes, but there are no causes that we know. In terms of research models, statistics, even even hypothetically, a complete hypothetical situation that that would be correlated, it would still be not significant. There's been a lot of speculation on genetics, and they're seeing a few genetic markers that could be a prevalence since we tend to see them in families, like if a dad has it, then the sons have it. So, you know, there's just not enough information yeah. as to what causes it. to some myths. I can't make friends. I will struggle to have friends. I will struggle in school. I can't go to college. I will never hold a real job. I will never get married. I will need help with daily living for the rest of my life. Level twos and level threes absolutely probably fit this myth. Most of our ASD clients will not fit this myth, these myths. There may be one thing or something, but they can learn mm -hmm. to do all of this. My, my son's married. My son holds a job. He finished college, okay? He has, doesn't need help for daily living, okay? There, there's nothing he didn't talk, okay? He did have all these problems growing up. But if a parent is taught what to do, how to teach the skills, that can be reinforced. There's a, you need a lot of repetition, a lot of over and over and over and over and over again stuff in order for them to get it from I hear what you're saying to I'm doing what you're saying. It takes time and us seeing them one hour a week is not enough. So the parents have to be working on it. The school has to be working on it. Okay, so what is autism? Autism is difficulty with social communication. So reciprocity can't have a conversation, nonverbal communication or any facial expressions. They're not, they're not tuned in social to those facial expressions. Developing and maintaining and understanding those social relationships is really difficult for them. So, wait, so would this be even level one? Even level one. Restricted repetitive behavior patterns, interests or activities. So they might have behaviors or restricted behaviors, inflexible routines, um, unusual or fixed interests. You're just like this is his whole life is is revolves around these things. This is he fixates on them all the time. Mom says he talks about them all the time. I was obsessed with he hyper focused on school buses and he mm -hmm. can memorize mm -hmm. every number on of every, every bus. bus. Yep. And like he could tell you what kind of motors were in it and everything that hyper or hyposensitivity to sensory input. So it could be the noise from the lights. You guys know these lights make noise. Mm -hmm. It could drive a person crazy. 
who is hypersensitive to them. And, and everybody's little idiosyncrasies are different. Some social interaction difficulties, difficulty with approaching social situations, relating to others, has to have trouble making friends, understanding common social cues, inappropriate responses to social situations. Higher level, they tend to have more eye contact than the lower level. So you might see that, you might not. And so it's going to be what's been taught up to that point, the age of the child, those kinds of things. Limited pretend play. My son loves Legos. He watched every single Star Wars and built every city and community of the Star Wars scenes. Okay. And he would stop the video, make a scene. This guy has to have the instructions. He cannot play with Legos without instructions. He doesn't have the ability to, to do that pretend stuff. He's a very limited pretend or imaginative play. Personal space challenges, always an issue. And then easily distracted. That can or cannot be an issue. Uh, we don't see this all the time. These are just a few things. And again, a lot of this is going to be like ADHD. You're going to look at this and go, well, I don't know. Is it this or is it this? That's where you go back to the DSM and, and really dig into those pieces. Language and communication, difficulty starting a conversation, monotone speech, which I mentioned High earlier. vocabulary. These guys and gals will talk about photovoltaics at eight years old. And, and you're going, photo what? Very, very smart. Language rituals, that would be like, there's a term called echolalia where they're, where they're copying what you say. He will copy what I say and he'll say it like three times. I'll say, oh, so, so you're happy then? And he'll say, I'm happy then. I'm happy then. I'm happy then. I've noticed it with different clients, actually, in the same, like maybe, you know, four, five, five, six age, when they're playing, even though it's appropriate playing and everything, it almost sounds like they're chattering their teeth, but it's a noise that they're making. So is it like an age thing? Or it could be, it could just be something that they picked up, but we do things, all of us, every single human on the planet does things to keep our nervous system at a just right location. So it may be they're using that heavy work for their mouth to yeah. keep them engaged at, keep their nervous system at a good position, at a good place. You're driving down the street and you're getting tired and you've had a long day and it's like, you got to stay awake. What do you do? Chew on ice, open the window, sing songs, shake your foot at church, shake your foot at church and move the whole pew. These are all sensory input that we use to keep ourselves at this just right level so we can stay focused and alert. Our children on the spectrum don't always pick those up or they use them functionally, but they're inappropriate. Sometimes they're appropriate. It doesn't hurt anything. Yeah. Okay. So there, but it is a function. It serves a function. Your fidgety kids, that serves a function. Tipping in the chair, that serves a function. They're serving a function. And usually it's, I need some kind of movement yeah. in order to large muscle movement or talking can do the same. I need some kind of movement to keep my nervous system at a good place. Again, we want to look at the environment and see yeah, look at everything. Is this something that they just picked up or is this something that they are using self-step. Yeah. And remember this checklist is just a checklist. You might see this in half of your clients, <laughs> see some of these things in half of your clients. And that doesn't mean they're on the spectrum. So really have to dig in a little deeper than just say, oh, you're on the, you do this checklist. Yeah. Um, those children and adults who are going to either shift pragmatics on you because they figured it out and they mm -hmm. want to be mean to you, or they don't get it at all. Pragmatics is a big word for what does the word mean in this context? So if I say there are two, then you know, you know, I mean a number of two. But they might take that and say, oh, they are there also, and think that the word that I when in that context, they may not get it. They will not understand the pragmatics of, a, of what a word means. There will be very literal interpretations. Or if they've learned that, then they get really sarcastic or they give you a run for your money. I do have a question because 
they're advanced in vocabulary, but they have difficulty processing. Pragmatics. Language. Difficulty processing. Processing language. language, either one. Language being the sentence, the whole complexity, mm -hmm. whereas vocabulary is just the word. The processing what you're telling me, like I want you to go into the other room and grab the blah, blah, and then come back and bring it to me. That's a process and it's a sequential process and getting that may be very difficult for them. But if you ask me what photovoltaics is, I can tell you like for three hours. And then facial expressions, you've got to sit down and say, this face is, this person is, and you have to keep it. Can you make this face? And then we'll make the wrong face. Um, it will take time for them to learn that face. Get a mirror. If you guys can get a little mirror and let them see the face and see the face of the picture of the face and see their face. And, and I'm talking seven, eight, nine year olds. You need to do this with because they will not. And some of them do, but a lot of them don't. Additional symptoms. We have cognitive and motor skill impairments. Uh, mind blindness is a fancy word for I hear what you're saying, but I don't understand any of it. <laughs> Executive function difficulties, difficulty with transition, problems with coordination. Sometimes they have weak muscle tone, and so it makes it difficult for them to be coordinated. Um, they also have spatial awareness issues, so they can't tell how close they are to the table or how close they are to the chair, or they'll trip over stuff. So those that are clumsy tend to be, just look at that. It could be another one of those things that is a symptom. Limited interest and unusual behavior, strict schedule, Intense and restricted interests and obsessions, self-stimulatory behavior. Video games, so a lot of kids, not best, but what they end up doing as they get older because they become object focused and it helps calm down their central nervous system. So when a child is getting stressed, all they want to do is play on their computer game or their video game. It's because it's the one thing that they have found that functionally calms down their nervous system. And so when we take that away from them, what's it going to do? It's going to have an opposite effect. It's going to make them more stressed. And so learning how to give options and choices is going to be really important. Visual, they tend to focus on visual details. And so having a visual calendar or schedule is good. Sensitivity to the lights. Difficulty with loud noises or crowded places or strong odors or textures. Um, they dislike certain clothing characteristics. Tags on the back of the shirt are a no-no. He has sensory issues and he, the socks had to be placed just mm -hmm. right. Hygiene. You might see that more often than not because they just, they don't realize the necessity. And so they won't put deodorant on or they won't remember to put deodorant on. And we did a visual for home and this worked really good was a visual checklist so when you go into the bathroom these are the things you have to do brush your teeth put on your deodorant that you need to make sure that they're getting done every day so visual calendars or visual schedules are really really important to help them remember to do these things eventually it becomes a habit we have visual uh flashcards this one first okay now this one back where i was interning there was a client who would actually was referred to us because of his body odor. That was like the presenting issue was this lack of ADM. So he was autistic, but there there is a social component to it, right? So one of the reasons we do perfume, one of the reasons we wear deodorant is because there's a social component. Like I don't want to be um, disagreeable. I don't want to be in a space where people will reject me. So I don't want it to smell a certain way. I want to smell like this. So people are comfortable with me. So there is that social component of hygiene that is really difficult for them to understand. Mm -hmm. But something to also consider is that sensory input mm -hmm. because the client would refuse to shower. Client would not shower. And we can think about that social element, but in his case it was sensory. Mm -hmm. The droplets from the shower were too overstimulating for him. So the solution was, taking baths that mm -hmm. he would comply with. Mm -hmm. So there is a social component, but in his case, mm -hmm. the bath, it's less sensory because you don't have all those drops or those yeah. little droplets hitting you in the right. skin. So you can't consider the social element, but it's also important to consider what is the 
sensory element. And then sensitivity to touch. And we see that a lot here in the office where people don't want to be touched. Does that mean they have autism? No. So again, just my reminder that we may see these, but it doesn't mean they have autism.